Now from Channel 5. I voted not to go out on strike, but I'll do whatever the union tells me to do. I, I figure if I sell 1,500 pints of blood a week, I'll be okay. <laughs> Can you vote no to creative control, health coverage, and a guaranteed pension? Well, we will drop all that in a second if they cough up more cash. How'd you vote, Bobby? I didn't, but I think you all know where I stand on work. Hey, listen up, everybody. This here's a film crew from Australia. I happen to be very big down under. They're doing a documentary on me. Watch what you say. Some of these guys speak English. Just pretend we're not even here. This here's my head writer, Jerry. He hasn't had sex in two years. What are you... <laughs> this is my old buddy, Bobby. He's kind of my spy in the room. Uh... That there's Nancy. I don't know why she's here, but this is Grant. Grant here is a bona fide genius. Hey, Grant, what's seven times seven? Uh, 49. Close enough, buddy. Hey, say hi to my fans down under. Hi, fans. You guys recognize me now? <laughs> oh, they think he's kidding. Now, that won't be necessary, Jackie, because we put the film in upside down. Oh, you guys are real pros. Laura, Laura, come over here. This here's my associate producer. She's in charge of uh, associating with the other producers. Without her, the show just shut down. Say something, Laura. Uh, the Writers Guild just went out on strike. We have to shut down. <laughs> See? <laughs> really? We asked Mrs. Gott. Okay, now over here we got the living room set. That's where we do all the family crap. You know, it's really boring. But here, this is a butcher shop, and that was my idea. You know, the great thing about show business is everything's fake, you know? Like this wall here, it's a fake wall. I can put my fist right through it. Watch. Ow! <laughs> hey, hey, break's over, buddy. Get back to work. Jackie, we were hoping for more stuff behind the scenes of an episode actually being shot. Otherwise, we might as well go home. Oh, don't go to her, buddy. The fun's just start. Hey, hey, are you the new golfer? Uh, Mr. Thomas, I'm Gary Stein, senior vice president in charge of network programming. Yeah, right. Listen, I want you to get them guys some sandwiches and some women. Don't let my youth fool you, Mr. Thomas. I have two years' experience. I'm here to talk about getting your show back into production. Don't you read those newspapers you deliver, buddy? The writers are on strike. Yes, well, <clears throat> off the record, have you explored the idea of using some non-union writers? Look, punk, back in Iowa, I was a hardline union man. You got it? Don't even talk to me about hiring scabs. But you're management now. And if you don't produce new shows, you don't get paid. Why is it always the little guy that gets hurt the most? <laughs> I think we understand each other. this movie is me boxing one of them kangaroos, you know? <laughs> Preferably one that's a little bit out of shape. Jackie, we're shooting a documentary. We don't want to stage stuff. Oh, come on. We'll do the whole Rocky thing, you know? I'll lose to the kangaroo a couple times, and in the end, I'll just punch the crap out of it. You wanted to see me, Jackie? Yeah, hey, this is one of my talented writers, Nancy Mincher, mates. Hey, say something funny, Nancy. Uh, uh Pickle. Pickle. <laughs> See? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, uh, Jackie, I feel a little strange being here. Relax, I'm not gonna hit on you. A little long in the tooth for me, anyhow. <laughs> That's not what I meant. I meant I'm not supposed to be at the studio during a strike. Well, now, since you brought that up, listen, Nance. How would you like to become the new head writer and hire the new writing staff? You want me to cross the line? Oh, when you say it like that, it sounds so sleazy. Think of it as scabbing. 
Come on, I know you've wanted this job for a long time. Well, Jackie, you always said I wasn't good enough. Oh, oh, that was a joke, you believe me? I had her going there, see, I always joke with the writers, that's why they love me so much. <laughs> it's only one of the many reasons. <laughs> Come on, now think about the crew. You know, if we shut down, they're going to be out of work, and most of those guys have kids. Some of them even have wives. <laughs> How are they going to pay for their liquor in those beat-up cars they drive? Jackie, I could get thrown out of the union. Hey, I'll square it with the union when the thing's over, okay? You'll still be the head writer. Hey, I scratch my back, you scratch yours. I don't know. <laughs> Come on, Nancy, clock's ticking, you know? You don't want to be a few years from now wondering what if when your career is sagging along with everything else. How often do you get the chance to grab for the brass balls? <sighs> My feet are killing me. Uh, mine too. What are you talking about? You've been in here drinking all day. Yeah, but you see how far it is from here to the bathroom? Have you guys seen Nancy? She was supposed to pick it with us today. I haven't seen her all day. Mm. Damn slacker. <laughs> oh, look at this. The Jackie Thomas writer. Over one million meat jokes written. <laughs> hey, Grant, how do you know when the Seinfeld writers are on strike? Oh, I don't know. The show gets better? <laughs> Oh, hey, fellas, I uh, didn't happen to see you at this year's Emmy Awards. Again? Uh, oh, burn me. Well, so Seinfeld's thinking, hey, my show's about nothing because my writers write about what they know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jackie Thomas, and uh, I used to butcher pigs for a living. Now I butcher jokes. The difference is, the jokes deserve to die. <laughs> Why, even the TV's thinking, who writes this crap? I should be watching Home Improvement. <laughs> with everyone else in the country. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Fighting each other, come on! Let's face it, both our shows suck. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, my guys are funny. <coughs> Me yeah. too. Yeah, I can't act either. Yeah. <laughs> Look, uh, sorry about that meat crack. I uh, guess we've been a little on edge since the network made us start putting the stories in the script. Mm. Yeah. We're a little on edge, too. Yeah, I understand, especially with scabs running your show. What are you talking about? I heard, uh, Jackie made one of your staff a new head writer. I heard that. <clears throat> so, Jerry Harper's thinking, hey, that bitch Nancy stole my job. <laughs> Ernest Borgnine falls into the water with all his clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, the reason that Mikhail's Navy was so good is that uh, we gave Mikhail a sidekick and we gave Captain Binghamton a sidekick. <laughs> Who's the sidekick on this show again? I told you five times, Abe, there is no sidekick on this show. Well, that's a big mistake. <laughs> Mikhail's Navy, we had two sidekicks. Now, come on, now. Can we get back to work, please? We're on page 15. This page needs punching up. Any suggestions? Yeah. Larry! Yeah, yeah, I say we use the word Zamboni somewhere. <laughs> I don't think it matters if people know what it is. It's a funny word. <laughs> that is the stupidest thing that I ever Where'd you learn to write comedy? <clears throat> From uh, Nancy, who was taking her class. Oh, maybe things are different now. I never wrote for a color TV. <laughs> I have a great joke for Red, though. A guy crushes... Hey. The... You know, she's really very good. She used to write for the Brady Bunch. I don't watch any of the new shows. <laughs> the last TV show I watched was in 1965 when I broke the knob off my old Philco. Nancy, uh, what network is this? Is this Dumont? We are on a D. 
deadline here, okay? Now, did I tell you about the Mikhail thing when I said that? Perry, <laughs> Perry, this isn't class. You don't have to raise your hand. That's what I was going to ask if we had to raise our hands. <laughs> Abe, could you take over for a minute, please? Oh, sure. Thank you. One season, we decided to give Tim Conway a sidekick. <laughs> But then we figured giving a sidekick to a sidekick was confusing, so we changed it to a doctor's office. Tim walks into the doctor's office. Nancy, Jackie's worried about the script. When's it going to be finished? I am doing the best I can, all right, with that lousy staff I've got in there. I mean, three of them just got out of diapers, and one of them's going back in. <laughs> all the good writers are out on strike. Yes, they are. <laughs> I could get this script out a lot faster with a little support from you. And I'm giving you as little as I can. <laughs> Laura, the only reason you are working this week is because I am working. Oh, did I forget to thank you for stabbing Derry in the back? Thank you. <laughs> My first priority happens to be to Mr. Jackie Thomas. He has given me an opportunity to prove myself, and that's because he believes in me and he respects me. Jackie says he wants to see all the scabs on stage. <laughs> Charlie, the big bowling tournament starts in an hour, and I got my big toe stuck in my bowling ball. Well, I, 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 I certainly don't relish uh, the, the pickle you're in. Uh, Jackie, let, let's tr try some butter on your toe. May maybe that'll loosen it up. Oh, no, Charlie, no butter. My podiatrist said I should cut down on cholesterol. <laughs> cut! <laughs> Nancy, what the hell's going on here? Is there a problem, Jackie? Yeah, there is. I, I'm not really sure that my character would know what a podiatrist is. It's a foot doctor. You're kidding me. <laughs> well, then that butter line is really, really stupid. Anybody think it's funny? No, not at all, sir. Oh, come on, Perry. It was funny in the writer's room when Skippy pitched it. Which one's Skippy? <laughs> you know, actually, Nancy, as you know, I'm not much of a complainer, but... But let me just ask one little question. Why do I have my bowling ball down at my butcher shop? And better yet, why did I stick my big toe into it? Well, because it's funny and unexpected, and I've seen it work a million times. Maybe it was a bet. You want to see if your toe is as big as your sidekick's thumb? Huh? <laughs> Finally, somebody to make some sense around here. Hey, Nancy, you listen to him from now on. Thanks, Mikhail. Jackie, good news. The writer's strike is over. Nancy, bad news. The writer's strike is up. Man, we're screwed. You know, the situational comedy format is, is not perfect by any means. For example, they tell me not to look into the camera. Now, how can you not look into a camera when they tell you not to look into the camera? I mean, it's impossible. <laughs> Jackie, may I speak with you a moment, please? Sure, come on in. Well, Jackie, I think we've got enough footage. We'll be on our way now. Well, thank you very much. Send me a tape when you get done and give my fans a big kiss down under. <laughs> Jackie, this new writing staff of mine just isn't working out. I've, I've taught them everything I know, and they're still not funny. <laughs> You know, I was thinking that since the writer's strike is over, you might consider hiring the old writers back. You know, actually, Nancy, I was just about to think of that. Uh, we'll do it. Great, great. <laughs> I just hope Jerry doesn't mind working for me. That won't be a problem, actually, because uh, part of the strike settlement is that I fire all the scabs. <laughs> Even me? Hey, it's your union. <laughs> What do you think? Can Nancy's script be salvaged? Possibly. But why does Jackie keep calling Charlie his sidekick? <laughs> I don't know, but Jackie loves that part. Mm. Jerry, uh, now that my stepmother is, like, fired, am I going to be fired? Because I'm really not that close to her. And I'm not here because of her. I'm here because I slept with Jackie. <laughs> you staying, Stephanie? Oh, excellent. Thanks. <sighs> Nobody can run the copy machine ever since you did whatever it was that you did to it. Jerry, could I talk to you alone, please? 
No. I just want to explain why I did it. Well, I don't want to hear it. Nancy, you crossed the picket line and you tried to steal my job. Now, normally I admire initiative, but not in this case. So here, take your autograph picture of Florence Henderson and go. It's not that bad, Nancy. I'm not fired. There you go. Goodbye. <laughs> Well, God, Jerry, you know, this whole Nancy thing's really got me upset. Yeah. I'm gonna go pull into her parking space <laughs> before some vulture takes it. Bobby, the hell you will. your request we got here ASOP. Good. I just got a copy of that documentary. Boy, they really stuck it to me down under. <laughs> I'm gonna sue the hell out of those guys. Jackie, you sure you're not just overreacting? Overreacting, Laura? When have I ever overreacted? They made me look like a jerk. Well, it is a documentary. <laughs> I'm kidding. They didn't play fair, man. They said they're gonna make me look good and then they showed me doing stuff like I normally do it. You know, like getting Nancy to scab for me. Jackie, I could get thrown out of the union. Hey, I'll square it with the union when the thing's over, okay? You'll still be the head writer. Hey, I scratch my back, you scratch yours. <laughs> Come on, Nancy, clock's ticking, you know? You don't want to be a few years from now wondering what if when your career's sagging along with everything else. <laughs> hey, how often do you get a chance to grab for the brass balls? <laughs> Damn those Australians. We beat them in a war once and we're gonna do it again. Jackie, I can't believe this. You coerced Nancy? That word is not in my vocabulary. <laughs> what does it mean, anyways? It means that you forced her to scab. Hey, this Weasley little network guy with good breath made me do it. What do you think? Do I have a case? Well, it depends whether you assigned a release or not. Oh, we're in luck. I think I did. Oh. <laughs> Jerry, I think we might have jumped to conclusions about Nancy. She didn't go after your job. Jackie conned her into taking it. Oh, yeah, the master manipulator. We're talking about a guy who can't recite the alphabet without singing it. All right, maybe it was an accident, but he did manage to push the right buttons. Trust me, I've been a woman longer than you have. I found it, and it's signed. Ah, good news. Um, Jackie, I just don't think that suing these guys is the best idea. Now, if you're worried about how you're coming off, why don't you just hire Nancy back? Laura. Now, he did promise her that she would still have her job after the strike was over. You know what? That's a good idea. Because, you know, that bowling ball show turned out real good. That Nancy's got a good eye for comedy, Jerry. Oh, wait, wait. The, the only reason that that episode worked is because we killed ourselves rewriting it. The only thing left of Nancy's after we finished was the toe getting stuck in the ball. And that's what made it work, Jerry. You know what? I think I should get my toe stuck in something this week. Maybe a basketball or something. <laughs> Jackie, you, basketballs don't have any holes. Well, then find a hole to get my toe stuck in. Uh, I got one in mine, but I don't think you're that limber. Jerry, you can write it. I can do it. Jackie, even, even if I wanted Nancy back, and I don't, the union won't allow it. Hey, leave that to me. I'll make some calls, I'll grease some palms, I'll fly some goons in from Vegas, it'll happen. I'll go get her back. All right, I'll, I'll go and talk to her, but I'm not promising anything, all right? So, Jackie, you don't really know any goons, do you? Yeah, number two on a speed dial. <laughs> I think we need to talk about our characters, Doofus and Drippy. I'm not sure that you grasp the underlying motivations in their relationship. Well, it's a walrus and a seal. How complicated could it be? You want to work here or not? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I want to work here. Well, this story of yours is a mess. Do our characters learn anything? Do they grow? <laughs> Are they acting out the theme, or are they just talking about it? And what is the major dramatic question in the second act? Can Doofus get the bowling ball off his foot? Doofus does not have feet. He has flippers. 
I don't want to challenge your authority here at all, Mr. Laurie, but isn't this basically a series about a wise-cracking walrus and a stuttering seal? Well, it would seem that way, wouldn't it? In actuality, it's a microcosm of all the disaffected members of our society. Drippy is every man. Haven't you read the character biographies? No. Well, it's time you did. This one is for doofus. And this is for Drippy. Hi, Nancy. Jerry. Um, look, uh, Jerry, I'm, I'm kind of busy right now. I'm, uh... I'm trying to figure out why Drippy would violate the integrity of the subtext within the theme. Isn't it just a cartoon? That's what I thought, but apparently not. <laughs> what are you doing here, anyway? Jackie wants you back. What do you want? Jackie wants you back. <sighs> well, I don't blame you for being angry with me, Jerry. I screwed up. <laughs> There's no excuse for what I did. But I do have one. Look, I, I saw the documentary. I saw how Jackie manipulated you. But it's still, it's no excuse for what you did. I've been with the Jackie Thomas show from the beginning, Jerry. I helped create the characters. I helped drive it into the top ten. Five times Jackie fired the head writer. And five times I crawled in there and asked for the job. And five times he said he'd think about it. And five times he gave it to some other guy the very same day. Well, there'll be other opportunities. When? For 17 years I've been waiting for my chance, Jerry. And for 17 right, years... I get the point. Okay, okay. <laughs> Please give me another chance, Jerry. I'm pleading, Jerry. Don't make me beg. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but listen, I, I'm warning you, it's not going to be easy. Everybody back there hates you. So they hated me before? <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Uh, Gilligan's Island is who is the sign king? <laughs> Gilligan. No, but the show is called Gilligan's Island, and you usually don't name a show after the sidekick. Well, then it was the skipper. No, the skipper used to, the skipper used to hit Gilligan, and everybody knows that the sidekick can never hit the main guy. Yeah, it's weird. So, so what's the answer? I really don't know. Clearly, when Gilligan was on the boat, he was the sidekick. Uh, but the show took place on the island. Gilligan's Island. Now you're catching on fast. Another special case is Mr. Red. This is the first show in history where the main guy is an animal and the, the human is the sidekick. Now, actually, in McHale's neighbor, we had two sidekicks. Uh, McHale had a sidekick and Captain Binghamton had a sidekick. We once tried to do a show where we were going to give a sidekick to another sidekick, but it got very confusing. So we changed it to a doctor's office instead. <laughs>